Mathematics has proven there to be upward of 11 spatial dimensions of which our physical biology does not pick up on. We understand that the human eye only picks up a fraction of the entire spectrum of what can be seen. And as another decade goes by of not knowing anything about the origins of dark matter or the activity of dark energy, it is safe to say that a majority of what exists in the universe goes completely undetected to the normal human entity. If there are things outside of our five or six senses to detect, then surely this must also indicate that there is sentient life outside of our senses, as it would be ridiculous for consciousness to be barricaded within the confines of human detectability. Just as a scuba diver goes into the water to interact with fish, who must find him to be strange, or a child that goes into a video game to interact with characters as an avatar, or a scientist adding a germ to a petri dish to test its compatibility with a culture of bacteria, we must assume that the sentient life forms outside of our direct experienced reality must, from time to time, penetrate into our world. And when it does, it becomes the substance of legend and what we call today as strange happenings or the unexplained. So if you missed part one, first of all, go yourself, but here's a really quick catch up. Virginia, Brazil. NORAD picked up something unidentified and watched it land. Several witnesses saw a cigar-shaped object in the sky. There were reports of a crash site or some kind of wreckage. Multiple witnesses came into contact with a being that needed help and was transported to the hospital where it died. Another being on the loose had to be wrangled up by military personnel, which now swarmed the town. The townspeople saw the military scramble to deliver a black bag to the nearest hospital where the doctor on site was asked to do the unexpected. This is not science fiction, and here's the rest of the story, followed by speculation on what these and other beings might be and their origins and intentions. This next part, ah, uh, my... The doctor, who was also threatened to silence, has recently come forward to describe the events that I don't think any sci-fi or horror writer could have come up with. The hospital on lockdown was filled wall to wall with military personnel. Everyone in attendance, all the staff and nurses and doctors were afraid to speak. It was a vibe. The military insisted that the doctor take x-rays of this black bag. The doctor took the x-rays as ordered by the military, but the military insisted on pulling the x-ray prints themselves and quickly rushed the entire convoy away as quickly as they appeared. So this doctor himself not only never saw the creature or what was inside the bag, but he actually never got to see the x-rays in which he took. And he complains to this day that he did not get a chance to verify whether the x-rays were d done well or not because sometimes x-rays don't come out clear. The military did not seem to give a shit about that. Their priority was more based on the doctor not seeing his own x-rays than they were for those x-rays to be of quality. Also worth noting is that a local firefighter who actually helped wrangle up this second creature into the black bag with the military, also sort of secrecy, he also died about three days later of the same ailment as Officer Carlos. Anything that can be debunked, I would like to at least give the benefit of the doubt. This particular part of the story about the firefighter is alleged and comes from word of mouth accounts. So that's not something we can bet all of our marbles on. The doctors, nurses, and staff were all told that this was a training exercise. They had, they they were forced to sign papers that threatened jail time and fines if these events were spoken of. But I mean, we all know how that goes when a strange happening is experienced by dozens and dozens of people. They talk amongst each other and then they talk amongst friends and family and, and then it catches fire and, and people do what is right and they come forward. And as, as people come forward, more people come forward. Unfortunately, those who were directly 
there who have come forward versus those who came forward after the story caught fire causes a bit of confusion and I should say debauched debunkery along the way. For example, the best way that this story has been debunked by particular sources of information is the fact that some of these later accounts of people coming forward who say they were involved with this were found to be inconsistent in their stories. These accounts will be put on the forefront of these stories by skeptics to debunk them uh, in such a way that psychologically speaking, if you get into a story and you find out one thing is false about it, it causes your brain, your mind, your your ability to see the whole picture to uh, associate the entire thing with being false. This is kind of the same as uh, this has done with this this flat earth conspiracy you know they realized that real conspiracies were becoming to the forefront of us through the internet and we're starting to catch on to their bullshit and therefore they would put out a wildly crazy theory such as flat earth let it catch fire that way normal people associate all conspiracy theories with ridiculous ones like flat earth but before I go and call any conspiracy theories ridiculous, I might as well admit that uh, here in a moment I'm getting ready to go into a short spout of reptilians. But, uh, so, I mean... <laughs> So, interesting note, some of the military men involved in this also came forward, same as this doctor and most of the townspeople who, who saw this thing, and he also remembers vividly seeing this creature with the bag open and reported being stricken by this notion of it having three appendages on each limb, three fingers, three toes. And another part of the story as it continues, and I... I can't make this shit up it's this is this next part is is fun when the excuse riddled cover-up the military gave about it being a, a training exercise began unraveling due to public curiosity the military changed their story to this <laughs> some of you are laughing right now if you're familiar with the story they changed their story from it being a training exercise to assisting dwarves have a baby. The military claimed that there was two little people, a couple, having a baby and they needed military assistance in order to deliver this, this new baby. And that's what the whole lockdown was about. And that's what the creature was in the bag, was a, a couple of dwarves having babies. I, if you guys can help me with figuring that, I don't know. Also, on the same notion of uh, so-called debunking, it's worth noting that uh, the hospital was getting new equipment that day. The military claims to have been responsible for delivering that equipment. What a lot of skeptics are saying that these three girls and people saw that day was a mentally challenged man, a local man who is skinny and kind of feral. You can look at pictures of him, I'll put it right here. This man was known to the townspeople you know, a bit of a stray cat, I suppose you might say. Those involved with debunking the story claimed that because it was raining that day, the people of the town were confusing him for this demon. Let me, I'll be the first, maybe the first to say it, but that's fucking rude to go and say, no, you guys didn't see a demon or an alien or anything like that. It was a red guy. It's uh, how dehumanizing that must be to this this poor man. But fuck, that's none of my business, I guess. A journalist named, uh, uh, I didn't put that in my notes. Uh, I put the, his name on the screen. Who He went down there to kind of get the story and in a way kind of debunk it. That was his kind of thing. And he went to go speak with the witnesses, including the doctor and the guy who drove this being around and he was saying that in all the years of his investigative journaling he has seen all the bullshit lies and people of truth and he can tell the difference between the attitude of those seeking attention and profit and those who are 
frankly frightened and confused. And he insisted that everyone he spoke with who was directly tied to these original events were undeniably still shaken years later, especially the doctor who seemed to be beyond genuine of real humility and fear about all of these events. Some of the witnesses were offered money for their story after they had already come forward. The news offered them a, a paycheck and they took the money. And this debunks it. Let me tell you, if that's what I would do, and that's what you would do, and that's what these skeptics saying that this debunks it, that's what they would do. They would take the money as well. You're going to take the money. I, I don't see that as a viable way of debunking anything. People need money, the world runs on it, as we learned in our last video. It's worth noting that whenever they want to debunk these things, they put these inconsistent parts of the story that surfaced later in first as the leading edge of the story to, to sway the public, but the public buys it, but we don't. What's up, little buddy? Are you in the video right now? I am. You have food on your shirt. It's an egg. Was that a good sandwich this morning? Yeah, I have the bread I didn't eat. No, you didn't like the bread? Yeah, look, this is the reason I want to get that bald python. Okay, you want another ball python? Oh wait, we have a boa constrictor, don't we? Yeah. You can breed them though. You can breed them. And then look. What's the name of the YouTube lady who takes care of reptiles? I want to give her a shout out. Uh, my boy is 11 years old today, guys. Uh, so actually, it was yesterday. Yesterday. So give Emery a happy birthday. Reptile. Big discovery. We need to get you a YouTube premium. Right, give her these ads. Shout out to Snake Discovery. Snake Discovery, your YouTube channel is absolutely fascinating, informative of our reptiles. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. Do you need to charge your phone? Yeah, that's fine. You have 15% and we're leaving to the to the Mystic yeah, I'm Fair. Not bringing it there. All right. What are you talking about? Well, you are directly in front of my notes, so do, <laughs> do you want to pull up a chair or just scoot to the side? Any opinions on Mothman? Uh, I'm pretty sure he can fly Yo, and he's mm -hmm. a super villain. He's a super villain, dude. And what about Spider Man kills him with a single web? <laughs> How about reptilians? They would beat Spider-Man with one bite. But it's Tom Holland, the, f the newest Spider-Man? As far as I know, Tom Holland is the only Spider-Man. Uncharted? Uncharted, when he was jumping from car to car as they jumped and as they fell out of the plane and they found the treasure. And then, and, and then that- yeah, He's the best Spider-Man. He's the best Spider-Man, I know. You said that Spider-Man would defeat him. No, he would defeat the reptile. Yeah, he does in the movie. Hell yeah, he does. Do you have any opinions on the greys? What do you think they are? What the heck is a gray? It's a gray. It's a lizard. So you're saying that this looks like an alien, but this looks like a lizard? Yes. So what does that tell us? Think about that for a moment psychologically. How close these beings seem to be that uh, my son, who is unbiased about any of this shit, sees this and says alien, and sees this and says reptile. Almost makes you wonder if there's uh, maybe some kind of, if I talk like this, does it look like you're talking? Anyways, so reptilian creatures seem to feast upon our suffering. Ask beings that can shape shift into our reality therefore infiltrating and blah 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 i'm turning it into david ike real quick <laughs> this one um i'm not gonna cover the mothman because i think the mothman would whoa, 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 whoa. am i recording still yeah i'm pretty sure so i don't know what the cat did <laughs> To my original tracks here, she walked on this uh, sample pad and hit a button, which I'm not familiar with, so that cat's smarter than I am when it comes to f 
get my own shit up. Anywho, you already know the Mothman story, so I would like to tell you what a lot of people might not realize is that the occurrence of the Mothman is not isolated to Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Whenever the sighting stopped after the bridge collapse in Point Pleasant, he was seen in Chicago, over a hundred sightings near Lake Michigan on his, I guess, seemingly on his way to Chicago, multiple sightings that seemed to draw a line of travel. After several sightings of the Mothman in this one of these separate regions, the St. Anthony Bridge collapsed just like the bridge in Point Pleasant did. I mean, coincidence? Sure, but f f one hell of a coincidence. I suppose you can't have a video on hypersentient cryptoids without mentioning the reptilians, which has, I guess, reoccurred. Some people claim that they are the original inhabitants of Earth and that we mammals are new to the Earth. And it's hypothesized that during this gap of missing time, there was an intelligent species of reptiles that inhabited Earth was forced to go underground. And this is what legend says as well. Not only is it said by military personnel who have come forward but many legends and myths of ancient times describe these reptilian creatures that went underground due to the younger dryas era and built cities these cities sometimes are called agartha shambhala and have different names throughout different cultures but what is absolutely verifiable is that there are deep underground cities not caverns not holes in the ground not caves man-made cities that housed thousands of people. How did they see in these in these underground cities they built? Uh, many of which don't have suits on the ceiling of the tunnels. So they weren't using torches. I have to have the vision of a, you know? Other accounts of reptilians claim that a species that lives outside of our dimensional awareness, outside of our biological abilities to sense them. We all know that our five senses are very limited compared to the spectrum of reality that can be picked up. And it is said that these creatures live within a dimension of space in which we can't see. Tales of impossibility, which helps bring to light something very interesting that mathematics has proven that there are 11 spatial dimensions. We are aware of three spatial dimensions. How'd you do that anyway? How'd you get that petrified? We used salt. Salt, okay, so pink salt. Uh, we ate the crawdaddy. Don't say that anymore. You should actually cut that out. Why? He said daddy. Crawdaddy? He said daddy, yeah. Okay, what's wrong with that? 2023! 2023? Why can't I say crawdaddy? Daddy, now. It's like a sh sugar daddy. <laughs> now. So, like, you shouldn't say that in 2023. Okay, I won't say crawdaddy, but I will say. I will say that Tom Holland's name is actually being pronounced wrong whenever it should be pronounced. Daddy, what do you think? <laughs> crawdad said, uh, that, that wasn't the crawdad speaking, that was that. Yeah, it is. If you become a ventriloquist, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Do you think that sentient creatures can exist outside of our awareness, outside of our five senses? Uh, we have more than five senses. How many senses do we have? 36. 36 senses? Yeah. In the West, we say that we have five senses. In the East, though, they say we have six senses because they consider mind to be a sense. Oh, well, yeah, it is a sense. I think so, too. And also, there's different parts of the mind, so those are different senses in the mind. True. In which case, it's worth noting that maybe a separate sense happens whenever we feel things within. That's fine. Speaking of these spatial dimensions that we can't see but can prove mathematically, expanding upon this idea of, just use scissors, there being multiple, and or in any case, in infinite dimensions in which our human biology can't pick up on. Expounding upon that is a great book, The Holographic Universe. This is one of the first books to actually dive into the subject and it's a must have for anybody's esoteric library. What's interesting about the combination of us factually knowing that there's 
11 spatial dimensions are living within a reality that is not able to be understood by us in our biological form. That's kind, that's new science. What is old science though? Yeah. Old science though is guys like King Solomon. Demons or daemons to your left, there are tens of thousands to your right. And alluded to the idea that we are in reality completely surrounded by sentient beings all of the time. But sentience permeates our reality. Within this reality is beings that we just can't see any more than an ant can see us. If you blow on the ant, it senses that as wind. It's not going to think to itself, a person just blew me. It make your own jokes if you want about that little slip up. But just like those ants, we have to put down our ego for long enough to admit that we might also be of a lower dimensional frequency. We can't perceive a vast array of the universe around us, and that includes sentient life. If I was to hypothesize the idea that we can see ants, but they can't really see us, so to speak, tells me that these beings, if they are in fact not of flesh and blood origin, but of more of a spiritual origin, so to speak, or maybe are a physical nature, but just live within the compounds of a larger frequency of vibration of reality. We have to admit that it very well could be that we are the ants in this case and they are the people. And then there's the whole rabbit hole about government and reptilian shapeshifters, in which case I've seen zero compelling evidence of this. Now I could be wrong, but that's just where I'm at right now with that whole thing. My last video, this uh, Gateways of the CIA, delve into Dr. John Monroe's actual 35 year study of these reptilian creatures that occurred to most of the participants in the CIA funded gateway process, uh, as well as Dr. John Monroe himself. These occurrences with non-human intelligent beings are not rare. In fact, it is said that upwards of 70% of people who have experience these otherworldly events and creatures don't come forward. 70%, which makes me kind of realize something. What's the difference between the people who don't come forward and the people who do? Dr. John Mack is responsible for an entire field of psychology that is just meant to help anonymous people who have had these strange occurrences and can't describe them. So can we make that bomb at one point, maybe? Yeah, we'll make a bomb. All right, get out of here. Sentience permeates matter. And in fact, we know that sentience comes before matter. So biological form, the reality that we perceive is a fractal of conscious sentience. Consciousness, that primordial first cause, fractaled out into infinite possibilities, creating separate dimensions and different kinds of life forms and biological entities that sense the universe and the world around them in different ways. In the same way that a clam cannot see the way that we see with eyes, it does see and take in reality, however, in a completely different way than we do. It's all of a sudden not so weird to think about the fact that modern day science seems to back up the ideals that we are surrounded by sentient beings that sometimes penetrate into our 3D reality. Back in the day, Solomon called them angels and demons, and so did everyone else. Today, we call them aliens or extraterrestrials. In the Middle Ages, they were called fairies. The list goes on, you know, depending on the era and time and culture, they're called different things, but they're always sort of described the same way. Introduce uh, Dr. Pickles. Yeah. Dr. Pickles himself is actually a uh, fourth dimensional creature as well. Uh, we're lucky enough to have him here in our reality. Yeah, but... and then he muted our stuff. Audio. Yeah. So show him Dr. Wait. Pickles is a Zen master. We can prove it because look at this white beard. He's got a, a white, a super bright white mustache. Yeah, even though he's like beard. a couple months old. He's only a couple months old. Very playful. He's got a very loud purr too. 
but I love the way he looks because he looks like one of them uh, ancient gurus, ancient guru type man. Yeah. All right. I think it's time to wrap up this video, Dr. Pickles. Yeah, that's right. I think we'll leave it at that. We covered a lot of ground today. And if you guys have any suggestions on uh, other humanoid creatures that need to be covered or details about these stories that have slipped, this is kind of a, a paranormal type of video. If you guys are more of fans of the esoteric and alchemical subjects that we cover, like the Gnostic thought stuff, let me know what your favorite is because I'm planning on kind of dishing out a little bit of both. Yeah, it's, a, it's at the end. All right. This is the end right now? This is the end. We're done. Hug goodbye. <laughs> All right, it's cut. changing